Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about the format of an IPv6 address. So you already know that it is 128 bits long compared to IPv4's 32-bit address. The IPv6 address is written as x colon 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 x. So it's a great big long address but when you start working with ipv6 addresses don't get freaked out by the length of the address it's still just an ip address so whether you're working with ipv4 or ipv6 everything about that address works pretty much exactly the same so the routing and the switching is going to work no matter whether you're using ipv4 or ipv6 in the same way it's just a different and longer address that is used in ipv6 but it's not like you have to learn a completely new technology or a completely new way of doing things it's just a longer address that is on your hosts with the ipv6 address each X is a 16-bit hexadecimal field. And hexadecimal means that the values are 0 to 9 and A through to F. So an example of a valid IPv6 address would be 2001 colon 0 DB8 colon 0000 colon 0001 colon 0000 colon 0000 colon 0000 colon zero 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 one so you can see that it is a big long address compared to ipv4 so our ipv4 addresses are 32 bits long and they're written as x dot x dot x dot x each of those segments in between the dots is eight bits long we've got four of them so four times eight gives us our 32-bit long address. And each part of an IPv4 address is known as an octet. It's an octet because it's 8 bits long. IPv6 addresses, on the other hand, are 128 bits long, written as that string of Xs with colons in between. Each segment there between the colons is 16 bits, but there isn't an official name for them like we have the octets with IPv4. The equivalent of an octet for 16 bits would be hexadectet, but that's just too hard to pronounce, so nobody uses that when we're talking about IPv6 addresses. What the different pieces of an IPv6 address are commonly known as is a hextet, or a piece, or a quartet, but there's no official name. When you hear me talking about it during the section, I'll either call it a hextet, or a segment, or a piece. Okay, so you've seen already the IPv6 address is very long. It took me about a minute to read out that big long address before. There are, however, thankfully, a couple of ways that we can shorten it to make things more convenient. Address shortening is a standard convention and it's supported by all vendors' devices. The first way that we can shorten the addresses is that leading zeros in each field can be removed. So if we had that same example address that I was using before that you can see on the screen now, it can be written as 2001. And then the second hextet of 0 db8, we can write that as just db8. We can strip off the leading 0. And then colon 0, the next hex hextet is 0000. So we can strip off the three leading zeros and just write it as 0. The next hextet of 0001, we can write that as 1 and so on. So whenever you look at an IPv6 address and you see a hextet, if there's not four hexadecimal characters in there, for example, if there is two, you know that the first two characters must have both been 0, 0, because we can strip off the leading zeros. The other thing that we can do to shorten the address is that successive all zero fields can be shortened to colon, colon. 
So the middle bullet point you see here, that's the same as what we did just there in the last slide, where that big long address can be shortened by removing the leading zeros. But we can take it on a step further as well. So after removing the leading zeros, we had 2001, colon db8, colon 0, colon 1, colon 0, 0, 0, colon 1. Well, we can change that to... 2001 colon db8 colon 0 colon 1 double colon 1. So those those three hex tets near the end, which are all 0, we can just write that as a double colon. So in the example that you see here, there's three different ways that we could write that same IPv6 address. The big, long, complete one up at the top that's valid we could type that in on a router and that is acceptable the second one where we've removed the leading zeros we could also type that in when we're configuring an ipv6 address in a router and that would be accepted too or we can write it the third way where we've removed the leading zeros and we've also removed successive all zero fields and again that is a valid address so the three ip addresses you see there they're all exactly the same they're just different ways of writing the same thing and they're all valid we can use either of the three the standard way to do it is of course the shortest way the last one you see because that's the most convenient way to do it now with removing successive all zero fields that can only be done once in an address to avoid confusion so for example if we had 2001 colon 0 colon 0 colon 1 colon 0 colon 0 colon 0 colon B, that could be shortened to 2001 double colon 1 0 0 0 B. Or it could be shortened to 2001 colon 0 colon 0 colon 1 double colon B. Because you see in the example, there's two different parts of the address which have got successive all zero fields. But we can't shorten it to 2001, double colon one, double colon B. Because if we did that, you see it in the original address, on the left-hand side, we've got two zeros, and then to the right of the one, we've got three zeros. Well, if we shortened it to 2001, double colon one, double colon B, we wouldn't know which side of the one had two zeros and which side of the one had three zeros. So we wouldn't know what the actual address was. So to stop that from happening, you can only put in a double colon once during the entire address. Okay, so that was it for our IPv6 address format. I'll see you back in the next lecture where we'll talk about the different address types in IPv6 and we'll actually start configuring this on our routers as well. So you'll also see how to put this IPv6 address on your router. See you there. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.